Whether you're a diehard sports fan, a hopeless romantic, or a comedy aficionado, the Xfinity 10G network was made for streaming it all. Worry less about buffering when streaming your favorite shows, movies, or live sports and enjoy a better way to watch. Xfinity gives you a reliable connection for streaming plus all the entertainment you love all in one place. Fear not, because now you can finally sit back, relax, and stream your favorite entertainment and sports like never before with the Xfinity 10G Network. Want the same expert advice you get from the pros in the store while shopping online at DiscountTire.com? Meet Treadwell, your personal online tire guide that matches you with the perfect tire for your vehicle. Get your best match in one minute or less with Treadwell by Discount Tire. For exclusive podcasts and more, sign up at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. I'm Rebecca Lavoy, and this is Crime Writers On. Crime Writers On is the original true crime review podcast that digs in a true crime, pop culture, other podcasts. And on this episode, did a Colombian drug lord buy off an entire North Carolina town to get cocaine into the United States? A journalist and a famous actor explore that story in the podcast, Varnum Town. Joining me to get that done and more is true crime author, TV journalist, and host of These Are Their Stories podcast, my husband and love of my life, Kevin Flynn. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Rebecca. Also with us is private investigator, certified pet detective, resident cat lady, and author of the Piper Green series of cozy mysteries, Laura Bricker. Hi, Laura. Hey, Rebecca. And hey, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> hey, you doing, Rebecca? You sound like Dale. <laughs> it's just because I'm like in the Barnum Town. Like <laughs> I'm going shrimping. And finally, our resident Doubting Thomas, author of the City Trilogy of Novels, host of Strange Arrivals, and our Patreon Deep Dive Book Club podcast host, Toby Ball. Hi there, Toby. Hey there, Rebecca. <laughs> Kevin Flynn. Yeah. This is Thursday's podcast. It is. What's coming up on Monday's program? On Monday, we're going to be talking about the podcast Dissident at the Doorstep from Crooked Media. All right. Dissident at the Doorstep. And Laura Bricker, we want to give you the opportunity to tell everybody about Exeter Lit Fest and the special Crime Writers on adjacent programming. What's happening on April 6th in Queen AF Exeter? There is a lot happening. It's very exciting. In the morning, a lot of our listeners are going to be joining us at the Crime and Mystery Brunch at the Sea Dog Brewing. That event, by this point, is most likely sold out. But Saturday night, we are having a live taping of Crime Writers On at the Word Barn in Quaint AF Exeter, which is one of my favorite places in town. Mine too. It's awesome. Eight o'clock. They have awesome shirts with owls there that you can get when you come. And you can see us. They have hard cider on tap. They have beer, they have wine, sometimes they have snacks. It's an awesome place. It's an awesome place. It's super fun. If you go to their website, thewordbarn.com, you can buy tickets to our live show. And we're going to be talking that night about the Hulu series Death and Other Details. And we'll be recording an after show. Oh, we will. Oh. Yeah, sure. We're going to get oh. it all. We're going to get it all in. Oh, I have, an, I have an idea for that. You do? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny because I, I just want to, like, in case it's not sold out, can I just, like, throw in a plug to, like, help sell out the vinyl tickets? Yeah. If people like things that are cozy, they should come to the Word Barn. That place is so cozy. It's like that cozy vibes, right? Wouldn't you say, Laura? Oh, it's absolutely cozy. It's in an old barn that has been turned into a performance venue where they have you know, poetry readings. And then they have these amazing concerts with artists that are traveling nationally that they manage to rope in to come and do a show when they come through the word barn. And it is, it's super cozy. There's an upstairs, like this really cool little balcony area where you can sit. It's a loft, Laura. Oh, excuse me. It's a loft area where you can sit. It's just, it's such a neat spot. And, uh, you know, you could pull in and children help you park cars. There's chickens walking around and- Attack turkeys. They have a merch There's shed. no attack turkeys. <laughs> it's it's super fun. And the people that own it are just great supporters of the arts and the community and creativity. And I find them to be um, just fantastic people to have here in town. So I'm super excited that we're having our live show there. All right. Well, Kevin, I can't wait for that. And I'm excited to see what you come up with for our live show, Kevin. Okay. You're always very special when it comes to producing those things. Yeah, I'm returning to the scene of the crime. Yes. The scene of the crime. Oh, my goodness. Should you wear a scarlet letter? Okay. 
<laughs> wear a bag over my head. He's yeah. Kevin F. He's fine. I'm Kevin, yeah. No, I want to tell you a funny story. I, I continue to hear feedback around town about the- yeah. Kevin's um, dirty story at the word barn? Kevin's dirty story. But I have now in the last week, I had one lady that was at my favorite chocolate coffee breakfast spot. I stopped in and she was like, you know what? That story was so relatable. I loved it. <laughs> and then I saw my doctor walking around town the other day with his wife and he was not at the event. He's been yeah, meaning to see me. Words going um, around. Fan he fucking heard fantastic. The blow by blow of what happened. And he goes, You know what? If I had been there, I would have been laughing. People would have thought I was a pervert. I think it's fantastic. And then he broke into song and started singing me A, B, C, D. Oh. Oh. And I was like, oh. I was like it's so dirty. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh. So the the urban legend of Kevin Flynn continues to spread around Exeter. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. We need Exeter Lit Fest merch that says Kevin has a dirty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I survived Kevin Flynn's story hour. Would be- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kevin. Speaking of things that uh, people survived, Varnum Town is one of those things for certain residents, right? Yeah. Great segue, Rebecca. I'm just trying, doing my best. How about you just say, well, let's do what we do. Well, that's the review. That's the oh, music right. thumbs okay. up for thumbs down. I do the leading off. All right, let's drop that first clip. I think it's time. Right? Right. Leading off. We're going to encounter a tidal wave of toilets, a huge replica town that's almost as big as the town itself, and eventually, over the course of the season, DEA agents, the future governor of North Carolina, and a woman who did her laundry with cocaine instead of laundry detergent. Twin Peaks actor Kyle MacLachlan has a crazy story for his friend. In the 1980s, kingpin Pablo Escobar bribed an entire North Carolina town to let him land airplanes and smuggle cocaine into the U.S. But here's the weird part. The pilot didn't seem to know how to fly the plane. In fact, he overshot the runway, so he pulled back up again. So the plane seemed out of control because it turns out there were actually two pilots in the cockpit and they were having a fist fight over the control of the plane. Wait. The pilots were punching each other. Yes. Yes. The little known story happened in Varnum Town, population 300. They found that residents, many with a last name Varnum, got rich as a cog in the cartel's trafficking operation. But one fisherman who refused to be intimidated took on the town in a quixotic effort to stop the smuggling. It took a spate of bad luck and double crosses to bring the whole thing down. At the height of Dale's power, when his alleged deal with Pablo Escobar has transformed his little town, Dale does the unthinkable. He turns state's witness and names over 300 people as conspirators in the drug trade, the trade that he was responsible for setting up. And this is in a town of 300 people. So he basically turns in his entire hometown. In the podcast Varnum Town, McLaughlin and war correspondent Joshua Davis revisit this drug war footnote in a tale that features REO Speedwagon, lawn mowing Playboy bunnies, and an attack turkey. We hear from residents, investigators, and drug smugglers while the actor and journalist banter with each other about the story's quirky twists and turns. Spoiler alert, we are going to be talking about plot points from Varnum Town. So if you want to remain spoiler free, go to the estimated time code in our show notes for our thumbs up or thumbs down reviews. Now, I will say, Toby Ball, that they really missed a pop culture opportunity here by not making fun of Kyle MacLachlan's horrible performance in the David Lynch version of the Dune movie. Just going to (laughs) say he was Paul Atreides and that movie blew. However, what did you think about Kyle and uh, Josh together on this podcast as co-host slash raconteurs? I usually think of uh, Kyle MacLachlan as being um, Ray Manzarek in the Doors movie. Oh, but yeah, I, I I like their chemistry. They seem like two guys who got a lot of inside jokes, some of which sort of creep into the show and some of which don't. I think some people may find it like a little broy, like two two <laughs> two white dudes looking into kind of a wacky story. But I, you know, it worked for me. I th- I thought they were amusing and friendly and entertaining guides to this kind of farcical story. So it's a great cover, right? Ario Speedwagon on the side of the plane. Uh huh. I don't. Well, I don't know if it's a very good cover. <laughs> well, it's better than Pablo Escobar's logo on the right. side of the plane. I mean, I always thought maybe Pablo Escobar loved the band Ario Speedwagon, well, that's and this was his homage. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised that Toby liked it because, you know, there's so many true crime shows that are just two people talking 
about a crime they looked at online and today's alcoholic beverage of choice, right? This has like the best elements of those weekly shows. You got the banner, the jokes, the, you know, like I said, the camaraderie, but it also has some real investigation in it to sort of balance that out and boister it up. You know, I mean, it's not Josh Baker level investigations here, you know, it's not like going to Syria, but it's solid and it gives weight to the story and yeah, I mean, their chemistry comes through. And I think, you know, even Kyle McLaughlin, he kind of presents, you know, a little as a stiff or maybe not the stiff, but as a square, even though he's probably smoking a lot he's of He's the Robert Krolwich to Josh's Jad Abumrad. So For Radio Lab fans, you'll know what I mean, right? Right. He's the foil as they say, right? He's the one. He's the receiver of a lot of the information, right? Is that right? Oh, but he provides a lot too. It Absolutely. Just, first of all, Josh, his his bona fides is like a war correspondent. It's like we're getting into this. You know, it's usually you know these true crime chatty things. It's just people who their um certifieds is because they also like true crime certifieds, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's isn't that what what they said in uh, the program? Certifities. Certifities, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like actually got like some people here that you know could really dig into something. You could say, "Okay, I believe them." It reminds me a little bit of uh Wind of Change. And that it's like, "Oh, I heard this messed up story. Let me go and take a look at it." Although I think Wind of Change was a lot better and had like these weird little side things that it went and checked out. But I think it's kind of in that same sort of being amused checking out these weird stories in like a kind of serious way that I, I, you know, I liked. So Laura Bricker, this reminded you of another piece of media that we covered as well on the podcast, right? Yeah. This reminded me of like the legend of cocaine Island meets, sorry, Toby, the most bro podcast we've listened to in a while. (laughs) And at first I was like, Toby's going to hate this. I'm going to hate this. And then I was like, kind of entertaining once you accept it for what it is. But it reminded me of like the legend of cocaine Island where they're like, And we're going to tell you this crazy story that like nobody is going to believe. And it's like sort of farcical, like you had said before. And then it just keeps going. And you're like, you just can't make this shit up. Everything that happens in this, I'd be like, that can't be real. (laughs) (laughs) And then something else would happen. But even like the setup in the beginning, like where they have like the drug dealer, like he's like, I'm lefty because I'm left handed. And then he keeps like accidentally saying his real name. And you can just like envision this guy sitting there doing this interview. Okay, my name is Lefty. Why do they call you Lefty? Well, actually, I'm left-handed. Well, that's a surprise. Wow. Well, maybe you can tell us uh, who you are and where you're from. Well, my name is from. Wait, I'm Lefty, aren't I? You just tricked me. For the record, I wasn't trying to trick him. You want to do it over? Okay. Yeah, so so who are you and where are you from? Okay, my name is Lefty. Almost did it again. It reminded me of like that opening scene in Cocaine Island where they have that guy with like that stupid hat who's like, yeah, like (laughs) same sort of like these like weird characters that are actually real characters in this story. So, yeah. So once I got past the like, oh, this isn't the type of podcast I was expecting, I was like, I need to accept it for what it is. This is what years of therapy have taught me. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, it's actually kind of fun. Well, a couple of things I had to accept and I'll just throw it in there. One is that they kept talking about Kyle McLaughlin's role in Twin Peaks, which was a fucking long ass time ago. And I think a lot of people who listen to this will not know anything about him playing a federal agent. And they just kept being like, you played a federal agent for years. And I was like, listen, you have to be like my age to remember that, right? Really? You think I'm not a federal agent, but I played one on television. Do you think Lily, who recommended this podcast to us, had any fucking idea what they were talking Jeez. about? <laughs> she didn't know who the guy was. Another thing I had to get over were the many number of times that they made fun of the small town nature of this town and like the sort of hickish and I'm I'm using that. They were having eggs Benedict They were were very pejorative around this community and like the culture of this community and I I use the word hickish because that's sort of how they sort of characterize it and like and that made me a little bit uncomfortable. Another thing that I actually fucking loved Mm -hmm. and Kevin I'm so glad you made note of it the ad reads in this podcast yes. 
are rad. They did great. And they this, really lean in to reading the ads in this podcast. This is game recognizing game. <laughs> right here. That's really good. And though it's a little early in the shit, there's no other thing to do but then just like transition into the business section at this point. Oh shit, it is early. Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, how do you not come back from that? It was a perfect setup. Okay, uh, but yeah, we well, will talk about the ad reads though, right? Just randomly well, doing them the in accents. No, like, but, like, let's talk about the ad reads. Okay, there, yeah. so like they randomly at one point decide that he's going and it, like, is it Kyle McLaughlin who decides, or Joshua that he decides he's going to do an ad in like an accent? Yeah, it just does. And then, and then the next ad you hear one breakfast item per box. Don't be greedy. While subscription is active, that's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash Varnumtown free with code Varnumtown free. I don't know. No, you, I, what I, happened? It I, turned I, into George, a British he, thing. He turned into somebody else and I don't know who he is. <laughs> but he's quite scary. And then there's ads for adult sexual enhancement and I'm like, how do we get those ads on this podcast? And then there's ads for, uh, for don't weed. Need it. Don't there's, need there's, it. There's hemp and CBD ads on the podcast and they really lean into that shit and I loved it. Okay, Kevin. Well, no, it just it, it, it's funny, but it also plays into this whole idea that this can be entertaining with the right people, the right tone, and like the right moment. Like that wouldn't be a great ad read for something like the dissident, the doorstep, which we're doing next week, or gooned or something like that. But it fits really well here because they it, could better help ads for fuck's sakes. Yeah, no, I want to that, steal some of stuff. <laughs> It's not easy to pull off, right? And it add about mental health services. Yeah, yeah, but you know, more than the commercial aspect of it, it's it definitely shows their strengths here, and that it's the two of them, and they obviously are have been friends for a while, and they have an easygoing nature with one another, and they're both very sharp in different ways. And they, you know, they're not the the same character. They they bounce off of each other really well, and so that's why I'd say, hey guys, why don't you come on and tell everybody how they should join Patreon? Ah, join us at Patreon. There it is. Slash partners in crime media. I couldn't just like half ass into it, so I had to do that. You know, at, at uh, our Patreon, you can get every month between 16 and 18 exclusive podcasts, including uh, early and ad free drops. The number varies only because, like, sometimes weeks of the month vary. You yes. know, it just you sometimes know. it's February and sometimes it's a five week August. Yeah, you know, you so. never know what it's going to be. Yeah, so don't hold us to that, right? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, don't hold us to the thing that we just told you you're gonna. Well, get. yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, you know, it's it's a whatever. It's a big asterisk next next to it. <laughs> hey, you know? There's hundreds of things back there. We've proven that we deliver. Okay, hundred. We have over 500 exclusive podcasts. You don't have to listen to them all. You just know that more are coming, including the Crime Writers on After Show, our podcast, Married with Podcast, Yay. and Laura Bricker's Leave It to Bricker podcast. In the latest episode, she unveils her new book club that is, there's something for everybody. Kevin, you could do it in your little voice. You could be like, this book club has something for everybody. Has it has guns, it has sex, it has champagne, it has books, and it has swords. Wait, it has actual sex? At your book not club? actual sex. <laughs> no, wait, wait. No, no. <laughs> this is not a sex club. It's a book club. But there is smut. There is. We do sometimes lean towards some smutty books, and I may sometimes give dramatic readings and reenactments of books I've read, like that Fifty First Dates book that I yeah. discussed a while back. Sure, Laura does it, and it's charming, <laughs> and I do it, and I get run out of Exeter. <laughs> <laughs> there's also I learned in my book club. Apparently, there's a whole fan fiction thing mm-hmm. with like Hermione and. And Draco Malfoy, and they have like sex. So um, you don't have to whisper sex. Book. They were adults here, Lara Bricker. <laughs> God, um, Leviosa. <laughs> so I'm whispering it because I feel like they're too young for sex. So I'm just whispering. Uh, it. Not anymore. Recto Patronus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't read any. Of it, oh my goodness. Uh, also. Speaking of book clubs, Alex Segura, Chris Joyner, and Deb Shudica are going to be joining Toby Ball in his next Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club podcast. What are you reading, Toby? Smut. Smut? Yeah, it's just a lot of sex. Uh, It's uh, The Assassination of Fred Hampton, How the FBI and the Chicago Police Murdered a Black Panther by Jeffrey Haas. Sounds great. And we also have an Amazon storefront where you can see some of our favorite things. Rebecca, what are this week's Crime Writers on Amazon recommendations? Well, Kevin, I really love my Zoji Rushi Neuro Fuzzy Rice Cooker. 
Oh, that's great. Who doesn't love cooking rice in that? And Toby, what are your listener-inspired Toby Ball's deep cut recommendations? Well, uh, Kevin, I've got the Yolev Bridal Hair Bow Veil with Pearl White Wedding Veil with Barrette Short Tully Hair Accessories for Bachelorette Party Bridal Shower. Mm. And uh, just to follow up on that, I've got uh, Conlon Cat Scratcher Cardboard 2-in-1 Oval Cat Scratch Pad Bowl Nest for Indoor Cats Grinding Claw Round Cat Scratching Board Corrugated Lounge Cat B. Wow, B. Not A. B E. Don't know. I like a just kind of I like a grinding post myself. Yeah. Uh, grind, you can, grind away. I like it Kevin. when they just run out of room in the title and they just like put half the word there. It's like you can just make the title shorter in merchandiser. It's fine. No, you can't. <laughs> no, it's perfect. You can That's shop. That's where you're wrong. <laughs> you can shop us first at Amazon.com slash shop slash crime writers on. We earn commissions on qualified purchases. So Kevin, are you saying that people can go to our link and then do the rest of their Amazon shopping there? Like buy other stuff, right? Yeah, that's why I said shop us first. Okay. I just want to make sure that people understand how it works. You do all your Amazon shopping using our link. Exactly. Thank you for clarifying. All right, Kevin, before we end the business section, do we have any Patreon patron saints of the week this week? Our Patreon patron saints are Katie Conant and Rebecca Anderson. Bless you. Katie, Rebecca, we adore you. Thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon. Thank you to all of our past and future Patreon patron saints of the week this week. If you want a chance at being a Patreon patron saint, you know what you got to do. What do you got to do? Join our Patreon. Yeah. That's how you get it done. Can't win if you don't play. <laughs> Patreon.com slash partners in crime media. Said, you can't win if you don't pay. Hey, now. It's true, though. <laughs> we'll see you on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and fade that music out right now. Hello, America. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you don't have Consumer Cellular yet, now is the perfect time to switch and save. For a limited time, new customers can get wireless service for as low as $15 a month for your first year. Yep, the same exact nationwide coverage as the leading carriers for $15 a month for an entire year. What are you waiting for? Call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com and use code RADIO15. See ConsumerCellular.com slash FIRSTYEAR15 for promotional details. Your business was humming, but now you're falling behind. Your teams are buried in manual work, tasks are taking forever to complete, and getting one source of truth is like pulling teeth. If this is you, then you should know these three numbers. 37,000. That's the number of businesses that have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25. NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind. Get a customized solution for all your key performance indicators in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. With NetSuite, it's everything you need to grow, all in one place. Get your business back to the greatness where it belongs. Learn more at netsuite.com slash podcast 25. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the Internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. So, Laura, you have a question about this podcast that I also have. Oh. Did we ever actually, like, besides hearing these fantastical stories about the things that happen to people, I kept waiting to find out, like, is this real? Yeah. <laughs> like, every episode that went by, I'm like, here's a story about a guy. But, like, at the beginning, we're told, like, this is about a town that Pablo Escobar paid off to smuggle drugs. And then the whole podcast, I was like... Where's Pablo Escobar? Where's the payoff? Is this is this going to like, did you find yourself like wondering if we we're ever going to get that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually, you know, <laughs> well, listening to it. I mean, my thing was like, I was like, this is fantastical. Like, 
every story, like all I can envision is like, I'm sitting around at somebody's house at like a really fun dinner party. And they're like, get a load of this story. And then they wheel out this guy who was like, the Chinese guy was running around and then he was in the jail. And then he went to Florida and me and Larry, the cop went to Florida. And I'm like, how is this even real? Um, So I struggled a little bit with like not pulling back the curtain a little bit on how they actually confirmed some of these stories or if we're just supposed to sort of take them as like maybe they're a little exaggerated because they're urban legends of the town. Maybe they're not totally true. I mean, I feel like there was like hints throughout that like the DEA agents talked about more busts in this county than anywhere else. We hear sort of hints about that. But then the last episode that we've listened to we finally hear about it when they go out to see Dale out at his like Halloween town or whatever it is. <laughs> Fort Apache. <laughs> Fort Apache. His Halloween pop-up store of a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all his, all his toilets out front. And Dale's talking about how Pablo Escobar had like ears and body parts in, in jars or whatever. And I was like, that sounds very interesting, but is that true? I, I don't know. And, and then obviously I've done the Googling since then. So there is a book that was written about this case by the woman that they call up in the first episode. So my suspicion is she went to efforts to confirm everything for her book and they're relying on a lot of her material. But I wish that had been a little bit more transparent. Well, I'll just point out, as, as you alluded to, that we at the time of this recording have not heard the final episode. So it'll be interesting to see if they land that plane. Oh, the Ario Speedwagon plane. Yes. As it were. What a fucking great opening sequence. But as far as like, well, now I want to listen to more, the plane from Ario Speedwagon overshoots the runway because the two pilots are fighting in a fist fight with each other. Do you it's think, like- <laughs> I saw you made the note and I actually remember this too. Do you think the Ario Speedwagon thing in Ozark was a callback to this story? It could have been. Do you guys remember this in like the last, maybe the last season of, of o- Ozark where they they were like having- A fundraiser. A fundraiser. For, oh no, it was for the Dentists Association. They were like having something on the- <laughs> On the boat. On the riverboat. And it was like Ario Speedwagon was going to launder money <laughs> for them through their merch table or some shit oh. like that. And so I, I don't know if that was intentional or not. I went like started looking up like interviews with the people from Ario Speedwagon and there was no mention about, well, back in the 80s. Well, maybe they just Googled uh How, how did it be that it was the Ario Speedwagon? Bands. How did it end up? It was uh, the Ario Speedwagon's plane. Did they explain? Did it go by me? Like it was really their plane and what? They just weren't using it, or I don't know. I think they no. It was purchased by somebody, and they they didn't take the logo. Oh, off. It's- <laughs> which is not unsmart. No, you know? it's not not smart. I've got Claire and Thomas's old RV, so I haven't taken any of the stuff off of that. But also, by the way, I have. I mean, if you have a private plane and you're a famous person, I mean, that's a very like '80s thing to have your name on the side. Like, that's not a thing people do anymore. Like Taylor Swift no. does not have her name on the side of her. Only, plane. Donald Trump only does. assholes have their name on the side of their plane. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, like that's just that used to be a thing, right? And be, yeah. also concert buses, they used to put yeah. there. And it's like people don't want that anymore. Wings right? across America. <laughs> I did tell Payne Lindsay he should have a um, the uh, Payne Lindsay like tenderfoot investigation bus and drive it around the country <laughs> when they do stuff. I can see that. The mystery machine. The up and vanished like <laughs> bus ro- roll like into town. <laughs> and then And then he was like, I'm not fucking driving to Alaska. I'm flying there. And I was like, well, that's a good point too. Anyway, um, but Toby, did you think that some of the stories that we heard, I mean, we heard Dale told us some fantastic shit, but we also heard some other like wild individual tales in this podcast. Did you get the sense that any of these things or some of them at least were true. I mean, there's a, some of them are just stories and it's like, well, you know, maybe, but then other things seemed as though there was some corroboration, even though they didn't like give you the actual receipts, but like the boat that ran aground with all the weed, I kind of assumed that that's true. 28,000 pounds of weed. And which apparently is more than anybody but Kyle can smoke in a lifetime. <laughs> which I thought was like a pretty funny aside. <laughs> so it just kind of felt like there were some things that were referring to things that must have actually happened. And it wasn't just like exaggerating stories about wacky characters. I think a lot of the stuff Roger Morton talked about was real. Fuck that guy. Can you talk a little bit about Roger Morton? Yeah, I f- that guy's the worst. So he's basically... Like, it's this town of 300 people where, like, most people have been there, I assume, for several generations. But, you know, it's a small town. Everybody kind of knows each other. 
And then this guy is from another part of the state. It's like, I really want to fish, and I like this town. I'll never forget the first time I went to Barnum Town. People would just stand out in the yard and stare, you know, stare at you. Well, I said, uh, these people are 50 years behind the rest of the world, but I like that. I still like that. So he moves there, and then he decides he doesn't really like what goes on there. So he does everything he possibly can to shut everything down. And in the process, ruins his and a bunch of other people's lives. He wants to make it his town. Just fucking get up and move. Like, for real? Like, there's so many towns that are on the coast. Just go to a different one. You know there's still you sound a lot like, of ocean. Yeah. You, you sound like everybody who was born in the town where we live right now. Where they're like, <laughs> you don't like it? You go live somewhere. <laughs> that being said, though, you are not wrong about this guy. I mean, are the people in your town like writing the president? No. It's like a last thing? No. Or yeah. trying to like intimidate the local no, sheriff? they're literally into- trying to close the local school. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he like steal? the drug shipment too he, he he commandeered the boat yes and then his brother is he telling ruined him, like, his brother's life yes yeah, the, the clam cops like hey man maybe you should like kind of like ixnay on you mean the corrupt clam cop i got a good thing going here yeah i'm making i'm making 500 grand a year as a clam cop you don't want to fuck that up for me <laughs> all i gotta do is how about the, the police chief i just gotta fly my airplane at night tell people i'm looking for safe crackers <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's the stuff like when that stuff came up i was like i don't know like is that real like and the fact that the clam cop was like I'm a diabetic and I need to get like a Dr. Pepper really fast. That's why I was speeding towards this like illicit uh, (laughs) runway. I mean, some of the backstories, I mean, it was really interesting hearing about this Chinese pilot law. I mean, they, I will say what I like about this podcast. So I will say, I listened to this whole, all the episodes we had in one listen. I was wallpapering Me too. and I was just like, I'll listen to this and I'll listen to as many as I can listen to. And then I'll stop and I'll listen to the rest tomorrow. And I ended up listening to them all in a row. And I even listened to the stupid post credits banter shit, which I was like, oh, that's going to be stupid. I'm not going to like it. And then I was like, it didn't, I don't know. It was just felt like part of the podcast, like a little after show that they did. Mm-hmm. Kevin, did you listen to those little after shows? Yeah, we were talking about the... The sandwich and the guy next door in the shower, that kind of stuff. And then he was like sitting outside because the guy always turned the same song on for hours Baby, I Need Your Loving, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You hear those, Kevin? Uh, No. (laughs) I listened to one and then I was just like, I'm going to just fast forward that because I want to know what's happening in Varnum Town instead. Yeah, well, sometimes it did move together and sometimes it's a little bit of an aside. Anyway, I listened to this whole thing at once. And like you, Laura, I just ended up leaning into the fact that this is just a series of anecdotes is basically what this woven together but then sometimes the anecdote would get into like an it really interesting like the chinese pilot story was really interesting the dude was a, a taiwanese refugee uh flew to china to mainland china to save his family ended up you know he was a refugee because he got arrested ended up going to africa where he got roped in to this drug smuggling scheme which was why he ended up in this plane with this incompetent ass pilot who wasn't certified to fly the plane the plane crashes he grabs the stick he gets out he goes to a hotel where he asks for 20 cents like it was so detailed i mean that the, the and this is the cop telling the story right and there were just like the details like the guy telling the story the details were so rich and like i i just was very impressed by the yarn spinners in this podcast besides josh and kyle right that they had good talkers as we say yeah oh absolutely that's why i said it. it's like you're sitting around at a dinner party just listening to this story and i could just see everybody being like i'll have another glass of wine for this part of the story or whatever because yeah the story of that pilot and and the detail of like they go through that and then he goes to the jail and there's a lawyer there that he knows who won't tell him who the client is and then the fact that they then trace this pilot to Florida and they leave their teeny tiny town and then they're like blending in in Florida going to find you know what's going on with this guy like again I just was like I can't believe this really happened but I'm here for it dude had to buy special shirts to wear in Florida yeah they did and you're right Rebecca like there are people that are good oral storytellers and are really good at sort of recounting stories in a way that pulls you along for the ride. And this was that type of podcast. I feel like everybody in this town was really good at telling these stories. You know what really surprised me, Kevin? What? Was that Kyle McLaughlin went along on these reporting trips to Varnabas. Yeah. 
Well, okay. I mean, like, were the stakes really high? I'm no, probably but not. In these celebrity but, uh, podcasts, usually they just sit there and tell you shit, and they don't actually go on the reporting trips. Yeah, I mean, so Kyle is like the conspicuous name here. We've had other actors like uh, Al Fanning, Ed O'Neill. Donnie Wahlberg, they've been in like other podcasts that we've listened to, uh, but largely as narrators, right? And not really bringing, I mean, as narrator, not, not really bringing anything really to the table. But he eventually blends into this story and is no longer conspicuous. And right, even goes so far as to go down and interview Dale Varnum and walk through his weird, he said, pop up Halloween store <laughs> with the Burma shades. What did you think about? What did you think about a patch Fort Apache? Man, it was like it was giving real John from S Town vibes, right? Like the art just, projects. Yeah, just all over weird stuff. It's going to town, and like town is his weird house. So there was a town built inside of his house. I yeah, a town within the t- I just it's weird. There are signs all over the place that says Fort Apache. Pills kill and destroy families. Here's another sign. All leprechauns are welcome. Over here on the right, a municipal bus with a giant nose on the front and ears popping out the side and a very large shark jettisoning off the roof. And the inside of the bus is filled with mannequins and is being driven by a giant deranged skull is what I would perhaps pretty well capture. Got that. You just see, like, there are so many characters in this story that they didn't do like what they did with the the Ruby Slippers podcast where they tried to play it straight. Do you remember that? Instead, they like leaned into the absurdity of it and just like it's OK to laugh at this because it is literally bloodless. It, it isn't a homicide where you want to be you know, you know, good luck chuckling over the body. So it really was a, a fun journey. I will say, I, I except for the parts where they were making fun of the class stuff, which I was a little bit uncomfortable with, I did find the journey through uh, Fort Apache interesting. And Toby, you found some photos of it online and you actually did your own little exploration of it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do like a full exploration. I think I looked at it on my phone while I was waiting for something. But um, yeah, I mean, it's accurately described, although my mental picture of it was a little more extravagant, I guess, than what is actually there, which is, I guess, what I should have expected when I initially heard the description. But it's it's super weird, man. I mean, there's no, there's no getting around it. Mm-hmm. I love when they were like, Let's not get separated. It's like you'd have to leave breadcrumbs to get out because it's so confusing. Like when yeah. it's in Gretel's house or something. And there's the car with the golf cart on top yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's it's unusual, definitely. He sounds like an artist of sorts. I kind of liked it when Kyle and Josh were like, we could make a whole thing where we just stay here and just keep talking about this stuff. Like, we could never stop talking about this. Like, it really, that to me probably painted the best picture of just the scope and scale of the thing. I mean, he seems sort of like a fictional character, Dale, right, Laura? Yeah, he does. He doesn't even seem like a real person. It's like because of the level of just everything he's involved in, you're like, you can write this character because he's so, I, I don't know if we call him eccentric. He's very unique. I think eccentric is an okay thing to he's say. He's very unique, <laughs> eccentric. He's got this whole town. He's got Main Street, a jail, a pharmacy, a bar, the attack turkey, chickens. He's got lots of cats. Um, like Toby, I went online to like look him up and see what he looked like and see what this this Varnum town area, you know, his little town looked like. And kind of piggybacking what Kevin was saying, knowing Dale and hearing these other stories, I don't think there was any other way to tell this podcast than the way they did it because of the just over the top wild ride of this town and the people in this town. And I want to go there because these are the type of characters that I would totally be like, oh, I can't wait to go talk to these people. Like this would be like my dream come true. It's like last year when I wanted to go to the Sasquatch calling contest and nobody would go with me, like I would want to go to Varnum Town for the very same reason because I'm like, this is so interesting. Well, it looks like Dale's property was featured on American Pickers, by the way. Oh. Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> one, quick, one quick question, Kevin. Do you believe that he met Pablo Escobar? Yes or no? Lefty or Dale? Dale. Uh, was it, wasn't it Lefty who had the story about the ears and stuff? No. Dale. That was Dale? Yeah. 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 Dale said he went down to Nicaragua and they tried to confirm that, Mm -hmm. but they said if he had flown private, they wouldn't have been able to. However, they were able to confirm certain details that didn't necessarily 
you know, say that he didn't or whatever. But then, but then they were like, oh, yeah, wasn't it funny to imagine like Pablo Escobar just traveling around and saying like, hey, put the jar of ears over there. Like, do that, do that. But I'm just curious. Do you think that he did meet him? Yes or no? I think that it doesn't matter. OK, I think that the story is good as it is. Because what do I really care? I mean, somebody talked to somebody to make all this shit happen. Was it him? He, he's, he certainly seems to like embellish stuff, but I'm OK with that. Well, the question is, is he a small scale drug dealer or is he the connection to the, like, one of the world's biggest drug lords? Right. That's the question. But does it matter? I guess that is the takeaway. Hey, everyone. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater. And this is your wake up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single line 1, 5, and 10 gig data plans with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plans offered by T-Mobile and Verizon January 2024. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. Your business was humming, but now you're falling behind. Your teams are buried in manual work, tasks are taking forever to complete, and getting one source of truth is like pulling teeth. If this is you, then you should know these three numbers. 37,000. That's the number of businesses that have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25. NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind. Get a customized solution for all your key performance indicators in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. With NetSuite, it's everything you need to grow, all in one place. Get your business back to the greatness where it belongs. Learn more at netsuite.com slash podcast 25. All right, let's do what we do. Let's let our listeners know, should they check out Varnum Town, the podcast? Laura Bricker, what do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for Varnum Town? This is so interesting to me because when I listened to the first episode of this podcast, I think I texted Rebecca and I said, Toby's going to hate this podcast. This is stupid. And then... I started listening and continued listening, and I really started to enjoy this podcast. This is not told in the way that we would think of when we're thinking of like traditional true crime stories. It's these two hosts kind of sitting around a lot of times commentating in a very humorous way about some of the stories that they are hearing about this town. But honestly, I don't think this story could have been told any other way. Um, I said earlier on, this is kind of like in the same vein of like the legend of Cocaine Island. It's like a fantastical story. You can't believe it's true. I listened to this mostly all in one day while I was out driving around in the state of New Hampshire for my work. And I just was like, kept listening to the next episode. I'm like, this is just kind of fun. And we don't usually say that about true crime stories, but it is kind of fun. So uh, thumbs up for me. Tony Ball, what do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for Varnum Town? Yeah, I agree with Laura. I, it's fun. I, I thought about Cocaine Island too. But I think it's like, it's just a, a one step less sort of a farce. I didn't find that annoying or frustrating. I think there's enough weird stories, some of which seem to be true, some of which could conceivably be true. Uh, I'm sure some of them are just not true at all, uh, but they're all kind of entertaining. Josh and Kyle McLaughlin are, uh, you know, they're, they're an amusing pair of, of, of people to be hosting this. So I, you know, I don't, it's good. Like it's an entertaining listen. If you don't want something that's too heavy, like you're certainly not going to have to think too hard on this one. You're basically tuning in to listen to some stories and the stories are good. And uh, so, yeah, I give it a thumbs up. Kevin Flynn. Yeah, I'm going thumbs up. I enjoyed that this was uh, a quirky tale told in a fun, quirky way. I think that these kinds of stories where it just kind of threads the needle the right way, they don't come along 
that often, right? As far as like source material, something that feels like a tall tale, but is filled with interesting characters. I think, yeah, the uh, comparison to Legend of Cocaine Island is somewhat apt here. And you've got like this really interesting pair of podcast hosts. You know, one includes uh, an actor that everybody thinks they know. And then you've got a hard scrabble investigative journalist. And these two guys are funny and natural together. And so it makes for a really great journey with them. And in the end, how much of it is true? I think a lot of it. Is it it 100 percent true? Are they uh, taken in by some of the Ray Contours? Maybe. Doesn't matter. The stakes are very low. Enjoy the ride in Varnum Town. Yeah, I'm giving this a thumbs up too, but for slightly different reasons than you guys. Um, so I didn't care as much about the actual stories in this podcast, but I really loved the formatics of this podcast. It felt very fresh to me. It was a way to sort of use a celebrity voice that I hadn't heard before, sort of as a co-host and a foil. I now I'll just be really transparent. Even though I work in public radio, I don't love Radio Lab. I think it's too tight. I think it's too perfect. I think it's very rote, and I think a lot of the stories on it are actually not very interesting but with a lot of bleeps and bloops they make them sound super interesting but radio lab did invent the format of the host and the foil like sort of unpacking something and then with tape and sound sort of thrown in there to sort of have one person tell another person the story and then have them react like that's where that format was essentially invented for this kind of narrative and they've taken that kind of format and really loosened it up and unpacked it and and injected it with a lot of like humor and there were like some rough cuts and there was just like these sort of extended extemporaneous conversations about shit that was not really central to the story and they just sort of let us sort of linger on those moments and that's why I enjoyed this podcast like I wasn't particularly interested in a story about a small town that was infiltrated by the drug trade but i liked hearing the story told this way by these dudes and the voices they brought into it who were also great raconteurs so whoever like put this podcast together man like get in touch with me because i'd love to hear about your thinking and around how you did it and like i just i haven't heard anything like it and it just sounded very new to me and all you producers out there who are making things with famous people like Check out this one and check out how Kyle McLaughlin and Josh leaned into their ad making because Kyle didn't sound like a celebrity who was tapped to make a podcast. He sounded like a celebrity making a podcast. And that's a very different enterprise. And I just thought it was really, really fun. And even though he was very disappointing as Paul Atreides in the David Lynch version of Dune, he was very freaking good in this. All right, that's going to do it. But before we go, Laura Bricker, I have to ask... Do we have a cat of the week this week? We don't have a cat, Rebecca, but um, it's nothing that's died or is dying or has died oh, thank or is goodness. sick. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, in, in the spirit of the season, uh, Easter is coming up, which is early this year. I was kind of like, oh my God, Easter is like a few weeks I away. I never know when it's coming. It's like, and it was a surprise. I'm <laughs> like so like... not religious. And I was like, oh, I see people walking around with the ash thing on their face. And I'm like, I know Easter must be coming soon. And then all of a sudden I see eggs in the store and I'm like, Easter must be coming soon. Well, Easter's coming soon. And Manny, who is a workhorse that lives at the Full Circle Farm in Newport, New Hampshire, is in the running to become the next Cadbury bunny. Oh, really? It doesn't sound like a good fit for that part. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Manny, who lives in New Hampshire, this horse is sitting outside and it looks like they might have trained him to sit down and he's (laughs) sitting around a bunch of giant Easter eggs and is holding an Easter basket in his mouth. So I think Manny is doing a pretty good job as the stand-in Cadbury bunny because last year, remember, there was like a miniature horse that was in the running to be the Cadbury bunny. No, I don't remember that, Laura. Oh, well, I follow this every year. (laughs) I wasn't following the Cadbury bunny contest last year, but I'm glad to hear that we have one person on this panel who follows that news closely. I mean, it's news you can use, Rebecca. It's like when I read my horoscope in the morning. (laughs) Nice. You're nice. All right, Laura Bricker, folks want to reach out to you and make sure that they never miss any of the Cadbury Bunny contest news. How can they find you on social media? They can find me at Laura Bricker. What about you, Toby? How can people follow you to find out why it is that Amazon product titles have to be so freaking long? Uh, I'm at at Toby Ball and H. What about you, Kevin Flynn? 
I'm at Kevin P. Flynn. And if you want to follow me everywhere, hear my takes on the amazing Dune Part 2 or other things, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at everywhere at Reb Lavoy. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Crime Writers On. You can follow us everywhere at Crime Writers On. But I mostly encourage you to join our incredible community in our official Crime Writers On Facebook discussion group. Even if you barely use Facebook, this is the group worth joining, I promise. Just find us on Facebook. There's a pinned post that says how to join the group. Get episodes early and ad-free at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. You'll also get the Crime Writers On After Show, Married with Podcast, Laura Bricker's Leave it to Bricker Podcast, and Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club Podcasts. Our theme song was composed and performed by Ty Gibbons. Our line editor is the wonderful Livy Burdett. The executive producer of this fine program is newsletter raconteur Kevin Flynn. This show was recorded in the Treehouse Yoga Studio above the Mockingbird Cafe in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi Studio, otherwise known as Studio C The Closet, in our New Hampshire basement where we also get into loud arguments about whether or not someone can, quote, land the plane. Land that plane. On behalf of all the crime writers, thanks so much for listening. We will catch you Later. later. Dale said he went down to Nicaragua, right? Is that where he said he I, went? <laughs> Colombia, right? I thought he said Nicaragua. Uh, right. No, it was Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Uh, were you even, did you even listen to this podcast? Of course, shut up. <laughs> of course I read. <laughs> Dale said he went down to Nicaragua, and they, and they tried to confirm. I was cleaning the coffee maker at the time, yes, so I was and then, distracted. All right, let me say it again. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the Internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. (laughs) 